We're here at the Edelbrock Performance Center and we're about to talk to the guys all about their new Edelbrock VRS 4150 carburetor. We've got a couple different things set up in front of us and they're going to walk us through some of the features of this carb. This is our new VRS 4150 carburetor. It's part of a line of carburetors. It's completely separate from our old AFB line. Right, that we're all familiar yes. with. Yes, we do make them in the same place. We make them in Sanford, North Carolina. Cool. Obviously, you can see the, the major differences of this to the AFB, but the, the purpose of it was to kind of extend our carburetor line. We've had the best carburetor for cruisers and street cars mm -hmm. and all that, and this mm -hmm. gives you a little more of that race capability. Right, street but, performance, that kind of thing. Yes, but also street-friendly race. Yeah. Right, okay. So it's kind of a, a, that crossover. So we, we kind of went all in. You know, we went with a four-circuit fuel systems. You know, okay. instead a lot of carbs are two-circuit or some three, and we went with four. We uh, use annular boosters on the 750, 850, and 950 models. Okay. That's kind of key because annular boosters respond really well to low vacuum. They almost manufacture their own uh, signal to okay. the fuel system. So you can kind of tame a wild cam Right, easier with right. an annular booster. Okay. That's what we found with our AVS2 carburetor too, and transitions yeah. were all good. So we carried the annular booster over into the VRS line. Now on the 650, they're different, right? Yeah, the 650 has the down leg boosters. It's made not only for small applications such as the hot rod we're working on today, but also for some dirt track classes. Okay. And so they're, they're limited to the inch and a quarter Venturi. Oh, the Venturi size, yeah, right. Yeah, so this right. really works better with that. Right, okay, the annular booster takes up a little more real estate. Yeah, so we yeah. go ahead with a bigger Venturi on that those where there's no rules. That's the basic fueling system, and as you can see, because of the four circuits, you've got the bleeds on top of the carburetor. Okay, and, and those can all be tuned. Yes, you can easily add a little more air to the idle system and that'll lean it out. You can add a little more air to the intermediate or the mains, the high-speed mains. Gotcha, okay. And uh, one thing I wanted to show you too, Ryan, is the uh, intermediate circuit, and that's really kind of the four circuit, and that's what adds, but see as I open, you see the tube sticking right, out? That's right. the intermediate. So okay. you come, you know, as the throttle opens, it goes off, off, idle circuit. off idle, then through the transfer slot, and boom, here comes the intermediate, and then, and then the main. wide open. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, and so it's cool. really got some great transitions, good for a lot of applications. Now this has four corner idle circuits? Yeah. Yeah, so it's got four corner idle circuits on all four corners. It's got the mixture screws for each of those. And on the metering block itself, there's a small jet that feeds fuel to the idle system, the idle feed oh. restrictor, and you can change that so that's from no 29 as well. to 31, yeah. It may look complicated, but there's only a couple things generally people that ever Most touch. guys need to get into. It's like right, the main right. jets and the idle. And we've got two idle screws. Yes, yes, so it's mechanical. Primary secondaries. Primary secondaries, it's mechanical secondaries, no choke. I mean, it's more of a, a serious it's, it's, carburetor yeah, from that standpoint. Sure. Uh-huh. And so we do include links though in the kit. Okay, so, so this one's set up for progressive, but you can do a one-to-one -one application where it's all operating at the same time. Yes, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. So you can have the progressive, the one-to-one, -one, and then there's actually a, an even milder. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's really soft entry. So setting this guy up, which we're gonna show in a separate video, we're gonna yeah. do that in a little bit. Walk me through, I got the carb bolted on, I got the fuel lines hooked up. What are my first moves? Okay, good. Well, I'll tell you, when we build them in Sanford, they also flow test each carburetor after okay. it comes off okay. the ascent. So it's got a nice little baseline setting. Yes, so the float level's pretty much set and okay. things like that. It's really, you know, helps you along. Throttle blades have been set to the right position on that transfer slot for right. you and everything's right. kind of ready. So what you're gonna be doing is adjusting the idle air screw, which is right okay. here, that little hex, and that's gonna add a little more air to the system and you can increase your idle. And if you find that you're not getting up to 650 or 750, wherever you decide on that car that you want yeah, your idle yeah. set, yeah, you can go ahead and do the traditional, adjust those, adjust the those blades, a little bit. A little tiny bit. Yeah. Now, if we're using progressive linkage, do I need to adjust the secondaries much as far as the idle goes or do I leave that No, close? I would adjust more on the Just primaries and then the secondaries will be in the right spot on the transfer side. Gotcha, yeah, because yes. they're not affecting the idle at that point, right? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's fuel coming in, but it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're not asking them to open up yeah, we fuel and or air rather. Mm -hmm. And then I see there's a spot for a TPS sender. Oh yeah, yeah, Sending that's one unit? of the features of it is that uh, we have the provision for the TPS sensor. It's right here under this cap okay. and it's a standard GM three wire TPS bolts right on. 4L65E. 
Yeah. Guy needs a TPS signal from somewhere. Obviously, the carburetor, a traditional yeah. carburetor, mm -hmm. isn't going to give him one. So instead of running the cable and the box and all that yeah. kind of stuff, it's right there. We right. just plug a TPS in there and connect it. Yes, no more Very cool. Rube Goldberg. Right, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, trying to program them, <laughs> sync them and everything. Yeah. Very cool. And I see dash six inlets yes. on both sides. Yes. So, you know, obviously we, you, you could switch it around because it's the same threads on both sides of the carburetor. So if you decided that you wanted to have your inlets here for some reason or staggered the inlets, maybe a dual carburetor setup right, of some right, kind, okay. uh, it's very friendly that way. Now, what's the pressure that we want to set our fuel pump at, our regulator? What kind of pressures are we talking about? We're, look, we're trying to get seven piece higher. So yeah. standard carburetor yeah. size. Yeah. Okay, so standard carburetor yeah. specs. And it does have a 110 needle and seed. In fact, the 950 has a 130, well, needle and seed, but it's bigger. Like it's, it's meant to flow some fuel, so you don't need as much pressure. Right, okay. Words, yeah. I see a power valve in here. You want to talk about oh, that yeah. just real quick to mention certainly, it? Certainly. We did use power valves on both the primary and the secondary side. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, that kicks off. Generally, we use the four and a half. And so that allows you to set your carburetor up to be lean as you're cruising along. And then when vacuum drops to that four and a half inches of mercury, boom, you got more fuel coming in. Gotcha. You know, the power valve has these screw in restrictors behind it so you can adjust the amount of fuel that comes in Right. at that point in time. So this guy's very versatile. There's a yes. lot of adjustments that can be made. That's what we were shooting for. Now, speaking of power valves, I know a lot of guys are going, oh, power valves, it backfires, it blows it out, then I gotta go and replace that. But that's not the case with these. Correct. Okay. We have a power valve protection okay. circuit. So the, the vacuum signal for that power valve comes, starts right here. And you'll see there's a little hex bike plug with a hole through the middle and there's a mm -hmm. ball bearing in there. Okay. And so if that, you get a backfire, boom, the ball bearing hits the top seat and that signal doesn't, or the bomb doesn't right. hit the uh, okay. diaphragm of the power valve. Okay, very cool. So, yeah. So it seems like you guys have pretty much thought of everything as far as improvements and upgrades we tried on to the basic 4150 yeah. package. Yeah. yeah. We didn't really want to have a whole lot of options. We just wanted to go for it from the start. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And because this is a street capable carburetor, obviously we've got some options for vacuum. Oh yeah, we right? certainly do. We've got two 3.8s, so you can hook up PCV or power brake, okay. and then uh, two for uh, timing. Ported, for basically. For yes. your vacuum advance. Right, okay. exactly. So that's the gist on the VRS 4150 from Edelbrock. If you guys want to see a deeper dive into this carburetor, click the link shown. And for an install video, we're going to put it on our 32 Roadster behind me. Click on that other link. And for more tech videos like this, check out inthegaragemedia.com.